Right, I am back. Thank you very much for waiting. Um, you are a very patient man. I am looking at uh, this guy first just because it's short and sweet. There's nothing to say because it looks awesome. I still absolutely love this whole beginning. You know, it's doing all that stuff and then you got the, the tree thing you wipe with this guy slowly coming in. Super cool. That's neat. Oh, that's cool. Slamming. Boom. Getting ready. And title. Be awesome. I love it. Love it. All right. Here, I'm watching um, this guy, and I'm going to exclusively look at the panther only. I'm just kidding. Now, I got a question. So, watching this, what do you think about... Because my thoughts, and I was probably not clear enough that, um, and it's not something that you have to go, it's just like, uh, you know, throwing out ideas. That at the beginning, when this guy is eating this guy here, what if... My thought was that as he goes back, uh, you know, this guy might come up a bit here, has a, has a slight slump to it, and then, boom, comes down, and he has his little bite stuff with the meat. And then he does that thing here, which is cool. I love the rest. Now, as I'm watching it, it might just be too much. I think this could be cool contrast. I just wish maybe there was just a bit more. It just feels just. It would just be a cool beginning, so they're not just there, and it would be something where, even if he just goes up, for instance, and instead of like that low, the head would be a bit higher. So that when he goes back, you can still have the back motion, but imagine he's just a tad higher with this here. And you can see maybe he has the foot in his mouth here. Foot and mouth disease. Uh, the foot of the tiger, whatever, in his mouth. And let's go, and then this plumps down, which has, you know, shaking stuff here. Something, I don't know. Um, it's kind of the only thing here. But let's go into your notes. You said you managed to get the T-Rex feet back implemented and animated the rest of the shot. I think that the head turn could use a bit of love and the arms right at the end pull it back abruptly. Alright, let's watch just the head here. Alright, for this guy, I feel that this still feels a bit too um, too flat in its arc. Not that you have to make it cartoony, but it's, it's very, very Y rotation-y. Around here, right? Couple four frames earlier on that turn. So by now, imagine he's doing a sideways tilt this way. So you see a bit more at the top of the head, right? Goes over this way, and then into that. You know, imagine where then right now this is the orientation of the head, but it might just be a bit more like this at the end here. Stops a bit, gets into this orientation, which is cool. Gets back into this. That's cool. I think that's cool. Well, the only thing I would do here is that when the head gets down to here, so it's not just the closing of the jaw and in one axis, it would be out of here. I would say on this frame, Mish, run here, I guess. Goes forward, and by the time he's here, <clears throat> he could have, again, a tilt either towards us or away from us but it's a sideways thing where imagine you want to bite down uh, down here so imagine like his jawline is like this right head eyes <laughs> jaw that line like this and this would work if for instance the, the leg would be like this now imagine there's something where the leg is like this right and he wants to bite down on this he would have to turn his head so that it's more like this. Eyes are here. Arr, open mouth. Arr, right? So first it comes in like this. And then has a turn this way. Which you again, you can turn it the other way. You know. I would say if you go. If he turns here. I don't know. I don't think it matters too much. Because if he turns towards us, we see more of the eyes which was my first instinct but if he turns away from us we see uh, more of the underside of the jaw 
but that would me we would see more the um, inside of the uh, the mouth and the and the teeth. You know what I mean? So it, I'll leave that up to you. I think either way it will be interesting, um, and it just gives you contrast of movements. So it's not just down in one axis. And then careful when you have such a bend that you might want to bring up the chest a bit more. So it's not so like that, but it's a bit more fluid. And that way it doesn't feel like this is the side, the, the part of the action here that's moving the most. I don't feel like during all this, that's a massive head translation forward. I don't feel like it, I, it influences the chest enough. So that's kind of what I have on the head here. And you could probably delay the mouth opening so that it happens around here, but then have the maximum opening here. Just so it's a bit more not so slow. It's more like he's starting to yawn. Watch this. As opposed to opening. Um, same thing here, where once it's done here, that's cool with the tongue and everything. Yeah, at this point even you can have a little sideways tilt where we see more the top of the head coming towards us. Like a little, I'm a big fan of little you know, changes in the head for more contrast. Um, but again, this I would delay the opening, but keep it where it's, it's at its biggest opening. So it's a bit more of an aggressive uh, type of thing. Not that yeah, so like I like scare. But you know, so it's not just like a slow uh, ease out and yawn. Um, all right, the arms are at the end. Pull a bit too abruptly. Let's watch the arms here. All right, let's watch the arms from the beginning. It's okay. At the RPR, be very careful with the movements you have here. How slowly they go back. Just make sure they're not too swimmy. You know, you can have quick movements where where those fingers curl in a bit more, and this goes back just like 30% faster. Sure. Even this here, even those, that wrist movement, it's very delicate. Not, you know, I don't know. There's no reference for these guys, but this just feels to me that just kind of it would be, you know, it's the same thing for human. Like a lot of people do uh, character animation with humans where um, hands are moving very slowly. And the gestures, and especially when they're just milling and standing around, it's very swimmy. And you don't really do that. You don't really have swimmy, slow arms, uh, fingers, uh, wrists like that. Excuse me. Um, but if you do move your your wrist slowly, you do it right now. You can tell it's it's you're doing it on purpose. It's not a natural move. You're kind of adjusting your wrist a bit faster, especially fingers. A lot of people have very sl spliny, slow fingers, and the fingers are you know, a lot of you know, like muscle twitches, movements, and spasms. At the moment you move them slowly, it's a gesture, it's a very control, there's a thought behind it. And to me this is more instinctual, you know, primal, reflex, muscle stuff, so that type of slow spliny stuff, I think it's too much into a guy in a suit trying to act out a dinosaur type of thing. And I think when he goes down here, I would bring up those arms a bit and bring them in. So that, you know, they're up. When he's up, arms are kind of downish. When he goes down, he kind of brings them up and closes them in a bit. Just again, just for contrast. Change of, change of posing. Um, now, you're mentioning um, arms right at the end pull up a bit too abruptly at the end. Now, are you saying these guys here? Or are you talking about these guys? I actually think at that at this point, again, they're too slow. And they have a, too much of a beautiful arc. Because you're doing creaturey stuff, so you want it again, like more muscly and and reflexes and instinct and stuff like that, and not nicely animated with really beautiful little arcs back there. It takes away from the a from the creaturey feel and also kind of the weight. I feel like it gets it some for some reason a bit too too light. I would treat those more, you know, it's for. Pose changes with you know a somewhat amount of a quick change between poses. Sometimes just there dangling. Not that it has to be like floppy. Um, what's the word? Ragdoll type of thing. But I think this is a bit too much. To me, this feels a bit too animated, too controlled. 
So I'm not quite sure if you mentioned these guys, but that's kind of what I'm seeing here. Uh, the animated dead body reacting. We should talk about the beginning. And like I said, like something with his leg would be cool. The rest is cool. I love that. Uh, tried to make a star on the panther, but I have been... Oh, right, right, sorry. That is your panther fix that's coming. It's coming. As you get into it, though, what would be cool as you reveal the guy is that A, it wouldn't be in a uh, uh, twin pose like that. It would be like one guy down and then one guy would be up. Where, you know, it's just finishing the last step into here as he moves forward. So you would have a bit of a, a different, you know, different pose. And then the next foot can come up, next paw. Where this might be too doggy like, but so you can push it. You know, I'll probably keep this guy low and have this guy then up, right? So you're switching it. Um, so it's one and then the other. And also because that leg uh, is towards the camera, we can see more. So I wouldn't do what you have here where the left, his left goes forward first. So I'll keep that guy planted and do the right one up and then reach and do the opposite, which might screw you over. But only just because it feels for contrast, we would see more. But you know, it's not it's not a shot killer. So if you're already far into it and that's you do the opposite, yeah, that's fine. My main thing would be come in on a non-twin pose. Um, that's it on your note. So for me, I'm watching, for instance, now feet. Is that as I'm still curious if there's any way we can cheat this leg back? Is it gonna feel too off balance? It's a tricky thing that leg, so silhouette wise. Like this is cool, but even here it feels like this arm flows into this. So you have kind of a tangent, like an overlapping tangent time type of thing. Where you would, it will feel better when you know with that arm kind of here and this arm could be here, so that this leg is standing on its own visually, silhouette-wise. Going back here, as this piece goes up here, that little hip piece here, you want to definitely have that part of his butt, you know, pelvis top part here. You want to see that rotate over. You want to see a little. A little twist turn over with a tiny bit of shake. You know, it might go up and then you can see a little bit of a belly shake. Doom, right there. Also, if you would do that, if I'm looking at the height of this, it feels like you're doing this. And it feels like you, you should be doing it down and then up. Because he's taking us, like he's in a normal stance, right? Let's put them here, normal stance. Takes one leg up here, uh, this guy, right? So the root dips a bit, and then he plants the foot down here, which pushes you know that part of the leg up, which pushes the hip up, which then has this go back up. If this makes any sense. So that's cool, right? Goes down, that's cool, and then boom, push up here, which you have in this, right? But then you want to rotate the top part over, and at the same time bring it up a bit higher. Just a bit looser, not crazy enough because you want to make it, you know, too light. But just a bit more, so it's not, it doesn't feel so isolated. And I think in terms of now that you got all the action stuff in here, it feels like this leg is also really IK-ish planted throughout throughout the whole thing here. It's never moving. And I think what could help you. How about this? I got an idea. What if... So you wouldn't have to move those arms forward too much. But you bring that leg fairly back. Right? So they're fairly close together. So that when he takes his step back, now it's a bit more balanced. But at this point, uh, the, again, the leg is a bit further back. But we're still getting kind of a triangle pose. It's a little more balanced. So that when he goes forward here, right, on this, you can take the step forward to what you have and maybe a bit further back. 
because you're also forming a tangent right here with the toe and his head. So if that foot would maybe get up to here, that could be a good thing so that you have enough room for your arms. All a clean silhouette. But that way you have a little bit of a step forward as he goes forward with his body. Because as he leans forward here, you could argue that then he's taking a little step again to be more balanced with those movements. And that way you don't get that feeling that when I'm scrubbing, that leg doesn't move at all. Just not that way we keep it just a bit looser. And probably at this point I would have the tail around here this way. It's because it feels like there's a lot of up and down, up and down, up and down on one axis. I think there is some more side to side through here. But you know, it goes down, up and down, a bit side to side, but it still feels up and down. And then down and up again. Down and up again. So it's very repetitive. And you know, the thing is, uh, and this is because the supervisor on Jurassic Park 4, that she showed us some sketches and stuff where he was kind of redrawing some things. And he had a lot of the, the tail actually down. And he reserved these guys really just for specific action poses and tension and everything. And you know, he's bit, he's relaxed, he's kind of looking around, he's eating. I think we can re reflect that in the tail by keeping this low. So it's more in this kind of pose. And then you can bring this up here, which at this point would be the first type of contrast. So it's kind of lowish. And then you can have maybe a little bit side to side, come back down to uh, put his low here as he goes back he does a little side the way you have it coming towards here so imagine before that like he was a bit more like this right down and then coming to this we might even curl a little bit more so you have somewhere to go hook into this that you have here keep this the way you have it that's cool and then keep it like that like that's kind of a that's a cool pose for the very beginning and instead of going up here, you would you would go back and swing it a bit more towards us. It's kind of a it's still kind of a downwards curl. So that way, again, overall, it has he has that kind of relaxed pose. You know, there's that's a lot of muscle, muscle and whatever fat. I don't know. So it's a lot of weight on it. Oh, my mouse is freaking out. So it's it, it like I like you have it here. It's more this type of thing. And then once he gets attacked, tail can go back up and do more aggressive swings. I think that could be a cool contrast. And then as he goes forward, if you take that little step here on this guy, then as you get into your detail stuff, you can have a little toe up on this and then back down, you know, where it's kind of a re-grab almost, like a re-digging re into the soil, just a little tiny little adjustment. So it's not just always flat, flat, flat in here. Also, as he goes back here, you would then have a little bit, you know, as he moves back and potentially a bit sideways, you would have a slight tilt over this way on the foot. So like this part of the toe will be uh, flattened, but then this guy here will be a bit higher, if that makes sense, right? So it's kind of flattened here. This guy is more like that. And then the other guy starts to have this pose because the whole thing here Rotate it this way, if that makes sense. And then you got your the rest of the foot. I don't know why my drawings have a delay. Good times. Um, yeah. I think that is it. Um, yeah. As always, let me know if you got any questions and if something makes no sense. Um, but that's it for me. Nice work. All right. There's an email, you can sign up, you can start whenever you want, you can submit whenever you want, you get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right, thank you.